the debacle. That was a whole lot of chat. Of the Jets' the fucking offense. A whole lot of chat. They might have hurts, the best right? defense in the league. Uh, now like, seriously, you can make the case. Oh, it's gonna hurt. Believe you, watch. It's gonna hurt. Right. On to the story. Yes, ahead, <laughs> ah, it's, it's I would the say one. they're sorry. <laughs> so they There's a the player wrong. in particular that is super sorry. Super <laughs> sorry. Extremely super sorry. fucking sorry. Super Who sorry. I have wanted to be good, and I've been hopeful for. That you can make a case they have the best D in the league. It's like defense. I don't want to. There you go. Yeah, the OG Mabu and D, bro. God. You can make a case you know, you know. <laughs> that they have oh, at least the top three defense in the league, but they have the worst offense in the NFL because of one player. And that is Zachary Wilson. I don't care how many yeah. moms he, he sleeps with, man. He's it's not bad. Good. Yeah. It's Give that. Daniel Jones the Jets receivers. Ooh. Put Daniel Jones it's on that, the Jets. It's that, but the concerns are happening more frequently, and the flashes are not. Yeah, when he misses wide open he's just missing, swing passes in the flats. Yes, it, he's it, missing just, flats. He's missing wide open. I thought I was going to get on here and get on Zach and Mike LaFleur, the offense coordinator. I'm not going to get on Mike LaFleur. I think sometimes situationally he's not great, and I don't think he's— He's not the best he's offensive not the coordinator best offensive I've coordinator, seen. But he's a good offensive coordinator. He's exactly. scheming up guys exactly. wide open that his quarterback isn't seeing. Mm -hmm. Elijah Moore for a first down, which might have saved the game, misses him. Uh, where the debacle actually started was a wide open pass to Tyler Conklin that he just sails over his head, which almost resulted in an interception. Yeah, he played a turnover for a game, but he had two drop picks. He threw one right to Devin McCourty that he dropped. After that play, Zach was playing okay in the first half. After that play, it went downhill. It has that has to be a complete mental thing, which you cannot have in the NFL. Mm. I thought that was something that I liked about him is that he had a short memory. Well, apparently he doesn't, because it was definitely in his head. Because mechanically was completely off after that. Mm -hmm. Sailing passes over Braxton Bio's head, Denzel Mims's head. Denzel Mims is six fucking three. I was about to say he's so like how six you're gonna four. Do that? Four that had you gotta try. It's you gotta be able to complete a fucking screen pass. Yeah, and it's yeah. getting to the point now. It's just getting frustrated because this team. I look around. It's a really good fucking team that is just being held. You guys back are built by on him. both sides. They're good on. There is weapons on offense. You can't give me this whole. He doesn't have weapons. Now, was the run game great this game? No, the offensive line is in shambles with injuries, and they can't uh, block the run. But pass blocking la uh, last game wasn't that bad. And with those receivers, you should be able to move yes. the ball. At he missed Denzel Mims for a wide open touchdown. You know what? If they score a fucking touchdown. They probably win that game. Yeah, they do because of how. It was not, not fun to watch. You the, guys, the only thing that kept me going is, like, maybe we can pull this out of our ass. And then, of course, the punt return at the end, which fucking yeah. sucks. Five the seconds left. Worst, worst finish I've seen as a Jet fan in about probably, like, seven years or so. Jeez. Yeah, that one hurt me. That, that one hurt. It's the, it's the most hurt loss that I've experienced since the Buffalo how, game how did, um, seven years ago. How the second half go? So I didn't really watch the game. Offensively, yeah. it was fucking awful. Our defense stepped at the fuck up in the second half. Didn't yeah. Zach Wilson have three yards? Like, Zach Wilson. Did you had see the stat where average they like averaged? Six inches of fucking they averaged like yeah, two they, and a half yeah, inches average, per no, play. They seriously averaged like two and a half inches per play. It was bad. Per play. Their offense was That's terrible. Because once they bottled up the <laughs> run, <laughs> they, they bottled up the run That's and said they dared Zach to fucking beat them. And it's getting to the point now that obviously they don't even trust him to fucking do anything. And now, which I'm completely sold on Robert Sala as head coach. Because he came in today to the press, came out late to the press conference because he was in meetings and said, mm -hmm. it is completely open for changes. Everything is on the table. When you have only, a, you have less than 100 yards of offense in a game, everything's on the table. Won't fully commit to Zach. I do think Zach will start Sunday still. I think so too. But I think it's still a message to not only Zach, but to the team. Yeah. Of no, regardless of draft status or who you are or position you play, everyone is held to the same fucking standard. And I fucking love that because as a Jet fan, no, I like that is never there's never been that. To maybe since yeah. Rex, maybe you can give Rex. Maybe he had that, but I've never. There's never been a head coach. There's never been an adult in the building. It feels like. Mm -hmm. And now with GM Joe Douglas and head coach Robert Sala, I'm fully sold on them. You just got to get the QB right. Yeah, because you can't and say the sky is the fucking limit. that you didn't let down your defense when you had nine. That, that's that's the too. worst part. Of the, the worst part. That I think you that's why this that. happened. I think he would have had a vote of confidence if he didn't say that, and I get it. As a quarterback, you gotta you can't fall on say the that sword. as a yeah. You yeah. gotta fall on the sword. You gotta you fall on the sword, even if it's not your fault. 
even if it's not your fault, but even if it is your fault, and it is clearly your fault, yeah, and you don't fall on the sword, it's like a deleter. You lose yeah. the locker room. You, what does that you say? Lose the locker room. And Jets players are liking tweets uh, criticizing. Yeah. yeah, what exactly. does that say about you as a leader? Actually, both, exactly. Well. Both players came out and addressed that. Did they? Yes, JFM said. Both of them both said like I didn't mean to like the tweet. Oh, that's and we're all yeah. for Zach. Yeah, that's. I don't know. I will say that. My fingers slipped. I will say this. <laughs> most times when players like tweets like that. They don't address it. That's true. I think, so I don't know if it's a good or a bad like, thing. No, to help my mental health, I'm going to say maybe it's a good thing. They like those tweets on purpose. Anything, but, what do you think Elijah Moore was saying? Mental, yeah, really. Elijah Moore posted a picture today on his Instagram story of him throwing a football. Wait, yeah. He should post a picture of so, Mike White. Really? <laughs> so you, oh, thought, you thought this all started... I feel like it all started with Elijah Moore. Like I feel like Elijah Moore wasn't like mad at the coaching staff. I feel like he was mad at Zach Wilson. I think now, looking back at it, in hindsight, yes, uh, it yeah. has to be. Well, because the whole thing was when Joe Flacco was playing, it was Zach is coming back and it will be okay. Now, granted, they were winning games. He is still 5-2 and two as a starter this season. But it's in spite of him. It's not because of him. Outside of the Pittsburgh game and a little bit during the Buffalo game, yeah. it's been in spite of him. He hasn't played. He played horrible against Denver. Granted, everyone plays horrible against Denver. And you can even make the case Bill Belichick against young quarterbacks. But you got to get a touchdown. You got to You, you got to be better. Yeah. You can't be missing there. The film was terrible. Like, obviously watching the game was bad. But when you go back and look at the film, it got even worse. It looks like he doesn't even know some plays. Like, it, yeah. it's getting... It's bad. I'm all for if you want to bench him. Mike White. Mike White. If you want, if you want to give Mike Yo, White the Mike chance, White. Mm. I'm for it. I think that gives the team a boost. I Yo, think Mike White. I think, does. It, I think, I think does. it could give the team uh, a boost. And also, what I'll say, I've been critical. I don't think Mike White is great or even per se good. Yes. I think he had a great game against Cincinnati last year that – Possibly got him in uh, the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but he, he fights, man. He I fights. Want that. And I will say, he had a much worse team last year. This is a team now that has a hell of a lot of weapons. <laughs> that I want weapons. to, And he'll be able to create a fucking uh, uh, complete a screen pass. Mm-hmm. You so trust I'm him not more against than Zach? going to see that. You trust him more than Zach? To create a. Uh, Complete a screen he pass. He can hit it. Yeah, offense. I do. I do. Offense. I do. Uh, Mike White, bro. This, yo, he's a I dog, mean, the thing bro. with Mike White, Mike White, <laughs> Mike White does not have that capability. No, he doesn't. This so, puts the Jets, Jets in a rough position because now your team's so good to the point where you're not going to get a good draft pick, and now you don't have your quarterback of the future. You won't be able to draft trade. one unless you. Well, that's you, where that's where like it gets. So you guys are kind of stuck in no man land. Trade. Yeah, we trade for who? Other than Jimmy G, who are you going to trade for? You signed Jimmy G's a free agent. Whoever's disgruntled. Whoever you can get the best who, possible who, quarterback. What quarterback do you see being disgruntled Wait, that's really good in the near future? I mean, there is a possibility that Lamar Jackson doesn't resign. You may be able to pay him. I think Lamar will end up getting franchise tagged and paid. Now, there's the outside shot of that. Jimmy G may be sign him as a free agent, but... Derek Carr. They, they, I will say... I'm going to get to that in a minute. Derek QB away, but also before we move on, the defense... Fucking amazing. Also, why I'm sold at Robert Sala and Jeff Albrecht, who I was extremely critical of early in the season. This was one of the worst defenses I have ever watched in my life last year. Mm-hmm. They got their guys in there now. It is one of the best units in football. Sauce Gardner. One of the best corners in football. One of the football. best corners in football. He's a rookie. DJ Reed is also one of the best corners in football. I was about to say, he's one of the best corners, too. Michael Carter II is one of the best slots in football. Mm-hmm. They could use some help in safety. Jordan Whitehead, some of his, he's yeah, at times, he's his poor enough. tackling yesterday. Second half and improved. They could use better safety play. Uh, Quincy uh, Williams, Quinnen's brother, really good linebacker, has been getting better and better. His high, his best games are really fucking good. Quan Alexander, late season acquisition, great. C.J. Mosley, the quarterback of the defense, is mm-hmm. still playing at a pretty high level. The defensive line, fucking elite. Carl Lawson got to get a sack. Michael Clemens, who was a fourth round pick, a uh, fourth round rookie, gets his uh, got his second sack, I think, of his career. Jermaine Johnson, you saw it against the Bills how good he's played, and he's only playing a fraction of snaps, and he still ranks high among rookies. Mm-hmm. And he fell in the first round, and they traded up and got him, and it was great. And Quinton Williams, he won't win it, but he deserves Defensive Player of the Year votes. He is playing at he a consideration. elite level. He's on pace for thirteen and a half sacks. He's on pace to finish better than Aaron Donald did sometimes when he won Defensive Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. I think Micah will get it, 
but he deserves some. But that's only because he's generational. Yeah, he he's playing gently. Yeah. But Quinnen deserves all the credit in the world. Pay him. And yes, they are a QB away, mm. which gets me to to transition into a segment I thought of during the week. I didn't know this was going to involve Zach Wilson. 